everybody it's pandy and i'm playing world of tanks took the weekend off last weekend due to some family issues i know i've been on and off in the last month or so but this time around everything should be back on track everything should be good you know it's been crazy with everything that's been happening and everything should be good and cleared and happy and cozy and hopefully no bullshit will happen and occur in the next i don't know six months maybe a year but since i got this new machine together and since everything has been perfect i have been just depressed that i haven't been able to get a video out there so i'm so sorry i i love you guys i mean i got a lot of joys in this life like where the tanks porn and other games that i've been missing out on so i'm sorry that i haven't been around uh hopefully i'll be able to get more videos out there hopefully i will be able to do more more games and different types of games and hopefully i'll be entertaining and interesting enough to keep you guys for the near future so stay tuned hopefully everything pans out hopefully i don't get arrested without further ado you guys have been watching the mouse and that's what the video is going to be about now a little bit about this tank the overall development of just super heavies in general started in early 1941 this is when the germans started studying the designs of the soviet made heavy tanks like the kv1 and the kv2 in the early 1942 designs came Came to fruit in the form of the tiger mouse and the lowy or low or lova uh, lo lo. uh, <laughs> I can never say it right <sighs> But respectively, those tanks started to be developed in that time period of early 1942. Now the low, or you know, a little crazy pandy crying, has never made the prototype stage, but this monster led the way to the bigger, badder creation that Porsche was going to throw out there. Porsche received a contract for a 100 ton Panzer, which was going to be dubbed the VK-10001 in March of 1942. What was demanded by Hitler was an indestructible super heavy tank armed with a high performance gun. Arr! or something along those lines. Under these demands, the first gun was going to be considered was a 15 centimeter L40 main gun with a 20 millimeter heavy machine gun coaxial, while the 12.8 centimeter L50 was under consideration. Porsche submitted the design to be armed with a 15 centimeter L37 and a backup design armed with a 10.5 centimeter L70 main guns. Porsche promised that the first prototypes would be ready by May 1943, and by the end of 1942, the 15 centimeter, the 12 12.7 centimeter Menaval cannon and the 12.8 centimeter were all considered to be added to the production. The official names about that time started to come out in April 1942, about the time when Hitler's birthday was rolling around, and the nicknames to be attached to this tank were either the Mammoth or the Malzi. Hitler decided in January 1943 that the tank should be fitted with the 12.8 centimeter main gun with 75 millimeter coaxial, while the turret was basically designed so that it can fit a 15 or a 17 centimeter in the future for any needs that potentially might arise. From the design process of this 188 ton monster, a wooden mock-up of the mouse was presented to Hitler who agreed on the production and ordered a series of 150 to be produced. In November 1943, development of the mouse ceased and only one was completed for testing and trials along with the order of 150 were cancelled. Now in December 1943, the first turret list prototype was completed and was put to extensive testing. Tests showed that the mouse can barely move on its own power because of its enormous weight and just the total lack of more power to the weight ratio. The prototype was first powered by aircraft engines that did not provide enough power to speed this bad boy to what the design speed specified. Another problem that came about in regards to the tank is its suspension system, which is a common issue that I found out for all tank development on all sides. It had to be modified to be able to take the weight of the vehicle, and this was done simply to basically make everything more stronger and to add more like links to the suspension system, making it more complex. Now, the last issue that couldn't be helped was, well, there's no fucking bridge that can carry this big motherfucker. This problem was quote unquote resolved when a snorkel system was added to help it basically go across rivers that was down to a depth of eight meters now second prototype was basically put together which was based off of the improvements of the first mouse that was produced in march of 1944 in april a power plant was delivered and mounted and the first turret was added in june of 1944 armed with this 12.8 centimeter main gun in july of 1944 orders were sent down to stop the development production of the mouse and by august all work has ceased on any type of production the second prototype that was already produced started trials in September of 1944 with a DBMB 517 diesel engine. It's made a little difference in its performance and the engine however had an unwanted side effect for the crew members who close all the hatches. They basically needed masks 
with oxygen to be able to close all the hatches because of the engine. From mid-January to October of 1944, these trials took place at the Porsche Proving Grounds. During these tests, it was determined that any failure with any mouse, one mouse that failed needed to be towed by two other mouse tanks to the repair areas. This is where the development of the anti-aircraft version with the dual 88 millimeters housed in a custom turret came about, basically was thought of and designed. Now these working prototypes were eventually captured by Soviet forces a few weeks before the end of the war. It's believed that these machines were mechanically sabotaged by the Germans before abandoning them. However, rumors that these mouses seen combat action against the Soviet forces outside of the proving grounds proved to be rumors. Now this has never been made popular and records showed that there was King Tiger units operating in the area and these could have been mistaken for mouses from one or two kilometers away. At the end of the war, the first prototype's hull was made to with the second prototype's turret. Six German half tracks were used to pull this 55 ton turret off of a burnt out hull for pretty much to get ready for mating. Oh, that sounds dirty. Now the mouse was sent off back to Russia for testing where it arrived in 1946. Now one of the subjects of popular debate because of the mouse, because there's so much resources was devoted into it, was was sacrificing mobility for armor and firepower gain a tactical advantage? At least in Hitler's mind, it was worth it. Was it worth sacrificing the war, however? Looking back at it with a hard stare from afar, no it wasn't. There could have been more focus and effective use of resources to further develop the Panther tank in something bigger and better. Even a possibility of a modernization project of the Panzer IVs in 1942 or 1943 could have extended the war by one to two years easily. Could have they won the war, which is the biggest question I usually get get asked. No. Hitler started a bar fight with one too many people at the same time and ended up punching the Russian in the back corner which just simply came with a pistol and shot his ass in the kneecaps. That analogy is, you know, shot him in the kneecaps because Stalingrad was a bitch. But the question still remains, why did Hitler wanted a big old super heavy tank? The German army never really desired such a tank. The only reason why I can think of is political and propaganda usage of said tank. The only reasoning I can actually see is Hitler had a big thing for futuristic weapons and he believed that big monster behemoths that's just, just wiping out everything in front of him. The only thing that he did not think of was this aircraft. I mean, you can bomb the shit out of any ground forces, you know, put a bunch of cannons 30 millimeter 70 millimeter cannons eventually on aircraft to blow the shit out of a tank from high <laughs> i don't know so yeah i don't know so let's go ahead and get into where all the tanks mouse is a nut oh I just wanted to say that. Now, the main gun on the mouse is one of the most underestimated guns in the game. For the platform that the gun sits on, it simply has a lot of HP and armor, so it's an extremely balanced gun for what it's sitting on. When compared to its nemesis, that IS-7, the 12.8 centimeter comes with a little less penetration, the same amount of damage, but overall better accuracy. It's simply better at sniping from a long range and smashing and picking targets out. It does between 400 and 500 damage on average, which gives a nasty bite in someone's ass. It's a mean bastard. That's why whenever someone gets into the debate of is the IS-7 or the mouse gonna win in a one-on-one -on -one fight? Well, it depends. There's videos on YouTube that shows like an IS-7 whipping a mouse's ass and all that good shit, but you gotta really take it into perspective. The IS-7 has a dome-shaped turret that can actually deflect a lot of rounds that you just shoot into it, and the mouse simply can't shoot down into its hull when you're face-hugging it with an IS-7. The theory is, is if you're in a mouse, you wanna try Try to keep a good distance away from the IS-7, prevent the IS-7 from getting close to you, and you're able to retain that tactical advantage of having superior armor. If the IS-7 gets up onto you, on the other hand, well, you're just shit out of luck. At that point, you can only shoot its turret, and chances is you're going to bounce gold rounds even off the turret. So when it comes down to it, it just really depends. It really depends. The Moss is a sniping platform with heavy armor, and if you have an IS-7 duking it out with an IS, you know, or IS-7 duking it out with a mouse, IS-7 is probably going to lose because it just, the mouse just simply has too much armor and if you set up conditions for a fight, you know, you can't be closer than 300 meters away from your target in the game, the mouse is going to win. If you get the IS-7 to face hug to some bitch on the other hand, IS-7 will most definitely win. Each tank has its own tactically superior traits about it. In the mouse, it's all about that sniping. Now the armor on the mouse can never be underestimated by the lower tier tanks. Overall, the hull armor all around 
around is 180 millimeters worth of armor. All around, it's 220 around the turret. There's not many guns that can actually get through that armor, minus the tier 9 and 10 guns, which share in an exclusive club to be able to damage the mouse. Go rounds from a tier 8 gun is able to smash through the frontal weak spots of a mouse, but generally this doesn't happen. Mainly people don't carry gold rounds in pub matches, of course. Armor does have a key weakness against the tier 7, tier 8 artillery out there. Avoiding open areas will be key to your survival, and it is actually the most common tactic in pub matches to allow the artillery to weaken you down, and then allowing smaller tanks to finish you off. The armor does allow, at least for myself, to slam into some bitches, throw this fucker down someone's throat. And if you guys haven't noticed in the video, all I do is hit the W button, and I just drive right towards them. That's what the tank is most suited for, and, you know, combination with the mobility, the mobility is shit. The Moss is better in regards to mobility than, say, the T95, but it's still shit. It's more than enough to be able to push your way through the front lines into the bulk of the enemy forces on the battlefield, but the mouse, being open to artillery fire, will be more of a tempting target to artillery because it's much more slower. So finding your cover is good to surviving many upon many engagements, and a tank moves at an average of 15 kilometers an hour, so you're gonna be late arriving to the, you know, front line. Just slamming through and using that armor to the best advantage with a decent gun, you're able to make breaches, and they cannot stop you unless they're a bunch of tier 10s on that side. At least two or three to be able to pin you in. The Moss is one of those tanks that you can simply love in your deep black heart. I've seen many upon many times people comment in the game, the Moss is a tough nut to crack, and it is. And when it comes to this tank, it simply comes with a lot of, lot of, lot of armor, and a decent balanced gun, and it simply rolls over a lot of tier 7 and 8s. When compared to tier 9s and 10s, the mobility is the biggest weakness, and the most common tactic that I've found when combating Mosses is to let artillery weaken them up and allow you to get in there and finish them off at HE or through the weak spots with AP. The weak spots overall is the flat parts of the armor and the most obvious weak spot is the Glacier. But if you can get to the rear of the tank, that is ideal. Any self-respecting Moss driver will know this and avoid allowing tanks to get onto its ass, so you gotta be sneaky, hit the Moss with mass of numbers, and you're able to finish them off. Now playing as a Moss, you ideally you want to keep your frontal towards them because that's where your slope is, but to help the team out overall, allow the enemy team to put their overall focus on you to allow your teammates to pick off the enemy. It's as simple as I can put it. I can't put it any other way. Hey, there we go. Moss is awesome. I like it. It's slow, but it gets the job done, and it's just a battering ram that you can just slam into people's faces and just watch them run away, like, you know. Ah, it's a Moss. Yeah, that's it. I'm done. Whatever. Now we're at that part of the video where I get to give away some World of Tanks gold. This week I'm going to be giving away 6,500 gold to the North American server or 5,500 gold to the European Union server. To win that gold, you must just post a comment down below, maybe about the video question, which is, are you afraid or scared of the moss or simply put, have no fear? You, you can fuck them up as you please. Me, I found that the moss's biggest weakness, like I've already mentioned, is its speed. And if you can use that against them by pretty much outflanking them and shooting them from afar to disallow them, from getting a good shot at you tends to work out. Allow artillery to weaken that some bitch up and get in there and bust his nut. So that's it. I appreciate you guys watching. I am Pandy. Good hunting.